this isn't there. Yeah, but I think there might be air under the foundation. Like, look at your gear room. It's floating in air. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and also, if you look at the slider, do you see how it's like slightly ajar? Welcome back. Back with another banger. It's the React Files, where we react to the creepiest, craziest, scariest TikToks. You share what you love. Hope you're having a good night. And if you haven't already, please take a second just to smash that like, subscribe, ring that notification bell, just to make sure the algorithm knows what's up. So let's get straight to it. What's going on everybody? Some information that I just want to pass along, give to you guys um, about FEMA because a lot of people don't understand how FEMA operates. So FEMA provides training for things that they see on the near future. They use predictive modeling, threat assessment, um, following trends to look at possible scenarios that might be coming up. This year, the first three scenarios that they're offering to emergency managers like myself in these virtual tabletop exercises is infrastructure blackouts, social unrest, and mass casualty, mass shooter incidents specifically focused around malls. So, given that information, I would highly recommend you to think about your planning processes, your systems, and how you're just gonna conduct yourself in terms of one of those three or more occurring in your daily life. Something to think about, something to keep in mind when you see FEMA putting information out. Hope this helps. Yes, thank you so much. It helps a lot. Inside information for the inside curve. Stay prepared. Understand they already have concentration camps in the United States of motherfucking America that they've been building for four years now. And the question is, who in the fuck is you finna put in there? Okay, check this out, guys. Here we are at the FEMA re-education camp at Camp Atterbury, Indiana. It's about 50 miles south of Indianapolis. It's an active military base. I'm here on a World War II reenactment. We have clearance to be on the base. I figured I'd give you all a glimpse of uh, what a FEMA re-education camp really looks like. Now tell me why you have a bunch of FEMA trailers surrounded by concrete barriers and chain links fence. And not only that, you have guard towers at each and every end. And more trailers on the other side that have not been set up yet. Here is another one. And another one. And DCHEM stations to mop out. This is the FEMA Housing Staging Center. Or area, whatever you want to call it. Selma, Alabama. Every one of these is a housing unit. Here's what blows my mind, and the reason I could say I feel as if they would hold people here temporarily. Like any good FEMA camp, built right beside what? A train track. Why they got a train that's got three levels with little windows in it? FEMA trains, people right here in our own city. What else are they? Look how long that train is. It goes both ways. You got three levels. Little little windows. Tell me what that is. Prison train? Those ain't for hauling cars. People, wake up. FEMA trains right here in our own city, people. Every one of these trains, three stories for, you know, prisoners. I have never seen so many Walmart trucks in one spot. I wonder 
wondering what those guys got on their freaking trucks. Something serious, bro. Yeah, for real serious. What is in these assholes' trucks, bro? God, it's like probably guillotines. Both of Washington. FEMA Region 10 headquarters right up the hill. Y'all gotta see what he hauling. Look, y'all, look. From babies to adults. I'm telling you, y'all, look at this shit here. When I tell you FEMA coffins is coming in right now, what the hell? I will pack up my family and get the hell on from out of here. You see, they got a bunch of them down here. That's probably what it was, you know, they're, they've been on the ground, and they're already... That's pretty crazy. Look, they're all that. All of it. Yeah, it's one thing to hear about it, but when you see it, it's another story. And these things, and this footage has been coming in for years, it seems. FEMA has more power than the President of the United States or the Congress. It has the power to suspend laws, move entire populations, arrest and detain citizens without a warrant, and hold them without trial. It can seize property, food supplies, transportation systems, and can suspend the Constitution. When a state of emergency is declared, Executive Order 11921 allows the Federal Emergency Preparedness Agency to develop plans to establish control over the mechanisms of production and distribution of energy sources, wages, salaries, credit, and the flow of money in the U.S. financial institution in any undefined national emergency. It also provides that when a state of emergency is declared by the President, Congress cannot review this action for six months. Now, with the understanding that after Trump signed the National Emergency Declaration, FEMA took over. Now, this is March 13th, 2020. This is right after he signed the National Emergency into effect. It is only the beginning of what we're really doing, and now we're in a different phase. This is only the beginning of what we're really doing, because what they're really doing is putting everything in place to start the New World Order. Now we're in a different phase. The different phase that he's speaking of is that he is no longer president, and he has given full power over to FEMA when he signed the National Emergency Declaration. We had some very old and obsolete rules. Old and obsolete rules. Those old and obsolete rules are also known as the Constitution of the United States. That we had to live with, it worked under certain circumstances, but not under mass circumstances, but not under mass circumstances. Under mass circumstances is being under FEMA rule. They were there for a long time, they were in place for a long time, and we're breaking them down now. We're breaking them down now. They're definitely breaking them down because the Constitution is suspended. And they're very usable for certain instances, but not for this. Not for this. Because they can't go forward with their plan with the Constitution, our constitutional rights still intact. To unleash the full power of the federal government. To unleash the full power of the federal government in this effort today, I am officially declaring a national emergency. I am officially declaring a national emergency. So he is officially telling us in a coded message that we are now under the rule of FEMA, no longer having a president. Fast forward to March 19th, 2020, in the FEMA National Response Coordination Center. Well, Mr. President, Vice President, thank you for, for being here. Really appreciate your visit uh, to FEMA. I think uh, your visit really, uh, as you indicated last week, uh, by signing the national emergency uh, has really empowered FEMA, has really empowered FEMA, has really empowered FEMA. And he just made the declaration that FEMA is empowered, has really empowered FEMA. Has really empowered FEMA. Fast forward to April 10th, 2020, in plain words, it's been my great honor to have been their president past tense. Uh, the American people have been so disciplined. It's been my honor to be their president. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'll say it always. It's been, it's been my great honor to have been their president. And it's been my great honor to have been their president and have been their president, have been their president. 
I have a big decision coming up, and I only hope to God that it's the right decision. But it'll be based on um, the input from a lot of very talent, talented people, very smart people, and people that love our country. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. He actually will not be making any more decisions. This group of people that he says will be helping him make decisions are the ones that are making decisions now because it is FEMA that is making the decisions. And as you can hear in this live briefing, Trump obviously does not know what's going on because he said, you should have let us know when Mike Pompeo said we're in a live exercise, a live exercise. Pompeo says this is a live exercise. And what you'll hear in the background is Donald Trump say, you should have let us know. This is not about retribution. This matters going forward. We're in a, we're in a live exercise here to get this right. We, we need to make sure that even... T- we're, in a, we're in a live exercise here to get this right. We, we, we're, in a, we're in a live exercise exercise here to Should get this right we know. we we're no we're a live exercise here to Should get this know. right we know. we does he sound like a man that's in control of anything anymore he, he just looks like he has just lost his best friend in all of these videos that we're seeing now ever since he signed the national emergency declaration i'm sure most of us thought that fema was created to help people in disasters But here's the truth about FEMA. FEMA was created in a series of executive orders. A presidential executive order, whether constitutional or not, becomes law simply by its publication in the Federal Registry. Congress is bypassed. Executive Order 12148 created the Federal Emergency Management Agency that is to interface with the Department of Defense for civil defense planning and funding. An emergency czar was appointed. Executive Order 12656 appointed the National Security Council as the principal body that should consider emergency powers. This allows the government to increase domestic intelligence and surveillance of U.S. citizens and would restrict the freedom of movement within the United States and grant the government the right to isolate large groups of civilians. That's where we're at right now, people. We are all being told what to do, where we can and can't go. The National Guard could be federalized to seal all borders and take control of U.S. airspace and all ports of entry. Executive Order 10990 allows the government to take over all modes of transportation and control of highways and seaports. Executive Order 10995 allows the government to seize and control the communications media. Executive Order 10997 allows the government to take over all electrical power, gas, petroleum, fuels, and minerals. Executive Order 10998 allows the government to take over all food, resources, and farms. Executive Order 11000 allows the government to mobilize civilians into work brigades under government supervision. Vision. Executive Order 11001 allows the government to take over all health, education, and welfare functions. Executive Order 11002 designates the Postmaster General to operate a national registration of all persons. That's where your census comes in. Executive Order 11003 allows the government to take over all airports and aircraft, including commercial aircraft. Executive Order 11004 allows the Housing and Finance Authority to relocate communities, build new housing with public funds, designate areas to be abandoned, and establish new locations for populations. Executive Order 11005 allows the government to take over railroads, inland waterways, and public storage facilities. Executive Order 11051 specifies the responsibility of the Office of Emergency Planning and gives authorization to put all executive orders into effect in times of increased international tensions and economic or financial crisis. Executive Order 11310 grants authority to the Department of Justice to enforce the plans set out in executive orders 
to institute industrial support, to establish judicial and legislative liaison, to control all aliens, to operate penal and correctional institutions. And Executive Order 11049 assigns emergency preparedness function to federal departments and agencies consolidating 21 operative executive orders issued a... So that was an official breakdown of how it goes down, you know, how the, where the power goes, right? Of course, that's not where we're at right now, right? If things were to happen, that's where the power would go, right? And you've seen an example of it happening in real time, recorded. Of course, we was oblivious to what was going on, right? So much was going on. But to see it broke down like that, I've never seen before. Like, this is my first time seeing any of that. Like, whoa, did I learn something? Even storage facilities, you know? Like, dang, everything. What about being put to work? I was like, what? So, definitely an eye opener, an ear full, right? You just got to go and do your research and Lord willing, we don't have to see any of that. So did y'all know that if we have terrorist attacks or we have a widespread natural disaster, the United States will break up into districts like the Hunger Games. And by the way, just for entertainment purposes only. This is what the districts would look like if a natural disaster was to happen. Basically, FEMA in the states will have power over these particular districts. Let's see what the news have to say about this. Centers will be spread out throughout the United States um, in, in most of these eventually. And it gives uh, FEMA and the Department of Homeland Security uh, jurisdiction over what goes on in these, uh, in these places during a time of emergency. Okay, I want to go into what, because this act does make some some specific examples, some exclusions, uh, set some limitations, I should say. This. So the National Emergency Center Establishment Act, what it does not do, it does not authorize any federal officer or to employee go. to force an individual to enter a national emergency center or prevent an individual from leaving a national emergency center. So, Bob, it looks to me like there are some safeguards there. Okay, if you don't like it, you can leave. <laughs> well, I'd like to think so. And this was actually one of the other things that was changed in this new version of the bill. They added this. Um, but if you read what they're saying, you know, federal officer or federal employee, that doesn't cover members of the military. And since these are going to be installed in decommissioned and existing military bases, you're going to have people from the military there. So I would think they will have people, namely in the military, who would be able to force people to stay there or prevent them from leaving if that is their, uh, their what they want to do. Now, for type. Consider everything that's going on right now, that's valuable information. But in a Hunger Game settings, y'all don't have nothing on District Number 6. We got Texas and Louisiana combined together. The only competition that I see that we have is District Number 4. But then again, we got districts to begin with. Y'all let me know what district y'all from in the comments. Like and follow for more wisdom and stay tuned. And by the way, this is for entertainment purposes only. Six ways to avoid being relocated into a FEMA camp. Now you might want to share this with everyone because we're probably going to need to know this information very soon. Number one, be prepared enough to not need to seek out resources. This is definitely the best advice I can give you. Most people going to FEMA are seeking them out for basic supplies and probably did not prepare enough in advance for the disaster or emergency. Even if you plan on scavenging for resources, being out and about can increase your exposure to being rounded up by National Guard unit and escorted to a FEMA camp. At the very least, you should have a basic survival kit so you can be self-reliant and not need to seek out help. Number two, stay out of locations that have a high risk of mandatory evacuation. You can usually tell ahead of time what areas could be prone to a mandatory evacuation. Is your home vulnerable to a nuclear incident? 
Is it in an urban area or near a military base that could be targeted by attacks? All of these are examples of where mandatory evacuation could be put in place. So knowing your risk of these threats can help you see the potential for evacuations. Mandatory evacuation areas usually spawn FEMA camps just outside the evacuation area to house all the evacuees. If at all possible, try to have a better plan than being funneled into one of these camps. Number three, mark your home with a FEMA marking telling search and rescue it was already evacuated. If you want to get real clever, you can mark your home as if it was already visited by a search and rescue unit. Relatively simple and all you need is a can of spray paint. Pair this marking with good light and noise discipline and your home could be skipped over easily by anyone enforcing a mandatory evacuation. Build yourself a good shelter in place kit so you have less need to evacuate in a biological or chemical emergency. Now don't get me wrong, sometimes you just have to leave. If there is a chemical cloud hanging over your house or a nasty pandemic spreading through the country like wildfire, it may be necessary to bug out if you don't have the proper tools to stay put. Shelter in place kit is simply an add-on to your typical survival kit that lets you barricade airflow in your home making it as airtight as possible. Have a bug out location that is not your main residence. I can't stress enough. As we touched earlier, location plays a big factor in the risk of being evacuated. Having multiple locations available ensures you don't get pinned down in one spot. Not many people have resources to own multiple properties, so making friends with preppers not in your area comes in handy here. If you don't have any prepper friends that live far enough away, try helping a few non-prepper friends become pre Last but not least, stay informed. Know what's going on before a roundup occurs. Information is always key. Communication is passing the information back and forth. While news sources on TV and the radio can be managed and censored, amateur radio cannot. Staying informed during an emergency using CB and ham radios can help immensely. Not only can you stay ahead of any planned evacuations, but you can communicate with others to work together. Now I know this one was a little on the longer side, but I wanted it to all be in one video. Please share with everyone, AP out. Yeah, those are some great points. Like he said, information is a must. Stay on top of things. Make sure your communications is in order. Also tonight, we have discovered that there's an awful lot of secrecy surrounding a tiny airport northwest of Houston. But the warnings about trespassing and videotaping aren't about airport security. Channel 2 Investigates discovered it's all about how your tax dollars are being spent. The feds kept us out, so we cranked up the chopper and flew above to find out the scope of this waste. Hundreds of FEMA trailers we discovered sitting empty, never used, being resold at a huge discount. Investigator Mario Diaz exposes the practice, revealing how flood victims are the ones who lose. Every investigation is a journey. This one starts right here. Nice little day, isn't it? You're about to see an introduction, handshake, and a lightning fast denial. I'm with KPRC Channel 2 in Houston, NBC. Okay. Is it possible we can take our cameras into the facility here? Oh, no. They don't do any photography inside. This is not a top-secret government facility. It's the tiny town of Hearn, mm. Texas, a speck on the map two and a half hours northwest of Houston. Not much action in town, but there's plenty of business behind the tall fencing at the local airport. They're really strict about cameras. Oh, yeah. Perhaps it's because the government does not want you to see what Sky 2 captured early one Saturday morning in January. FEMA trailers designated for use after Hurricane Harvey. Dozens upon dozens lined up, ready to be sold at massive discounts. Units deployed after the storm. But Channel 2 Investigates discovered some are brand new, never been lived in. And the feds are selling them to the highest bidder. I say FEMA, you say... <laughs> I'm not allowed to say that. I don't want to say that word. Anita Shiflett nearly lost everything in Harvey. Her family qualified for FEMA housing, a government contractor informing them they had room for a manufactured housing unit. There was no question, no problem. And then we get the RV. But Instead of a manufactured home, they received this 28-foot travel trailer. As soon as they brought that trailer here, we were fighting. Battling for one of FEMA's MHU units. They promised it, but they gave it to somebody else. So imagine her reaction when we showed her what we discovered on the federally owned GSA Auctions website. We're 10 minutes away from the closing bid on a 2018 manufactured home 
in Hearn. Wow. For weeks, Channel 2 investigates monitored the auction of FEMA trailers, the vast majority, 2017 and 2018 models. Units with unwrapped new furniture. Opening bids, $100. I bought it from the FEMA sale. Donnie Ganaway met us days after picking up his new purchase in her. I think I got this trailer for $19,244. Inside of Donnie's 2018 Southern Energy model, we found a sparkling new oven, an immaculate fridge with paperwork still inside, even an activation tag in the smoke alarm. There were new drawers, spotless carpet, and a mattress still wrapped in plastic. Most revealing, documents detailing a manufacture date months after Harvey. It's amazing. I can't explain it. But they have their way of doing things, and why, I don't know. The state says FEMA's reimbursing them nearly $45,000 for units like this one. The federal agency admits to Channel 2 Investigates their average is $64,500 when they buy the units, with some topping out at $70,000. And let's not forget, Donnie bought his never-lived-in trailer at auction for just over $19,000. Were you surprised that you got it? I, I was excited. FEMA admits it periodically sells surplus housing units, adding that manufactured homes that were never occupied but stored for several years begin to fail with time. And keep in mind, some trailers are like new and stored for less than a year. The message from Anita and Donnie, a simple one. We're going to need them again. These areas are going to flood again. I would say they'll be reuse them. Now, there are two congressional rookies who campaigned hard on Harvey issues. Both have legislative oversight over FEMA. Representatives Dan Crenshaw and Lizzie Fletcher. We informed their offices of our findings, but both failed to accommodate us for a formal interview. We hope to sit down with them in the near future. Bill and Dominique, a lot of taxpayer dollars being spent right now on these units or have been spent on these units um, being auctioned off. Good enough for the public to live in for many more years. Apparently not good enough to have around for any more hurricane season in the near future. Now, mm. we're going to show you tomorrow exactly who is buying these trailers and where they are ending up. Man, some people get a great deal, others not so good. Right. Thank you, Mario. Yeah, I'm surprised they would even do an investigation like that on the news. But it sounds like FEMA got them deals. So then FEMA came to us, all right, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, which was tasked to stabilize this whole debacle. And they, because they'd contacted the Federal Protective Service, which is this federal police force as part of DHS. And they were supposed to send down hundreds and hundreds of police officers, federal police officers, to secure all these areas. And their employee union said, no, the conditions were too rough and too unsafe. They wouldn't go. So FEMA asked if we could do it. And we said, uh, okay, sure, right? Because our default answer was yes, and we're going to figure it out how to make something happen. And so yes, but then the, you know, the, the number became 700 quickly, but we had to provide all the life support, all the logistics support. And, and I'm so proud yet again of the team that just figured this out because at that point between Iraq and Afghanistan, every kind of military tent was on back order for years. So what did they do? Well, they went and bought circus tents and they put them up in various parking lots. Jim Dehart and his crew of maintenance guys took car trailers, okay, and, and put in shower and sanitation facilities inside that with uh, water treatment and we just figured it out how to support guys in the field and they what is actually going on in this mysterious structure there is an interesting structure called the safeguard complex that is built eerily to mimic the great pyramids built for approximately 500 million dollars it's puzzling how it was shut off and closed down the day after its opening well you see, the rumor floating around is that the structure was just a diversion, and the actual purpose lies deep underground as a secret base for the elites of the world to run the world from the shadows. Even though numerous people have reported strange things and sounds coming from the abandoned structure, no one knows. Yeah. Oh, oh, dude. Is no, it him? no, 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 okay, let me get, let me get low, 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 low. That, bro, he's eating something. That's so creepy! He's actually here, dude! Bro, it's broad daylight! Wow, I can't... Dude, that was so lucky. Okay, let me get close. Wait. 
This man is attacked by a strange interdimensional creature. It's some kind of shape-shifting creature. And that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed tonight's rabbit hole. And if you haven't already, please take a second just to smash that like, subscribe, ring that notification bell, just to make sure the algorithm know what's up. So what are we gonna do, y'all? That's right. Run these numbers up. Thanks again. Until next time.